I'm Devery Rowan. I'm a lead instructor and exceptional learner specialist here at Driving MBA. My name is Kathleen Ryan and I'm the director of curriculum and training and an exceptional learner specialist. Some of my qualifications for working with exceptional learners are that um, I went through ASU's Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College and graduated from there in 2013 with a bachelor's degree in cross-categorical special education. Um, I've also worked for five years in Scottsdale Unified School District in a self-contained autism classroom working with um, middle school level students. And I've been working here at Driving MBA with exceptional learners for five years. Well, my qualifications are I'm going on 20 years of experience of working with exceptional learners and actually I've been with Driving MBA for 15 years and that's actually um, a long time for a driving instructor. Um, you have to be able to live sort of on the edge of your seat. When we're out there on the road in particular it's important because that's a rolling classroom and we have to make sure that we're educating while we're keeping them safe. Usually with exceptional learners our model for working with them is to start with an assessment. During that assessment, we determine their level of readiness and what modifications or accommodations they may need to be successful throughout the program. Another component that we really rely on with working with exceptional learners is a very individualized in pro approach and program. So we work very hard to make sure that the program that they're put in fits their very specific needs. Our school is not for just exceptional learners. Our school is actually designed for all learners. All of our instructors are trained in how to teach in multiple modalities of learning and cover content in many different ways. So whether a student is neurotypical or an exceptional learner, they would benefit from any kind of teaching style that we could offer. Our school is not for just exceptional learners. As a matter of fact, um, it was about my second week of working at Driving MBA, and as I mentioned before, I have past experience of working with kids cross-categorical who have exceptional learning styles, and how to build curriculums, how to adapt curriculums, and how to um, you know meet their needs and support their learning style. Um, about the second week, we had a student who came in and as I was working with them, I realized this young man is on uh, the autism spectrum. And I was like, oh my gosh, all these years I've worked with these kids at younger ages, and I never thought what's going to happen when they need to get this type of training. Who's going to be able to meet their needs? And so we're not an exceptional learner school, but we do not, um, we accept all types of learners. Um, and we have the people here who have the expertise to be able to meet, support, and give them the education that they need. Why wouldn't a typical student need this kind of background and education? Um, it, yes, it works for uh, people who are exceptional learners, but it's based off of all types of learners. And primarily we work with students who don't have any kind of exceptions, but they still need to know and be able to stay safe. Um, they need to have the same kind of training it's just as important for them as anybody else. Good teaching is good teaching, all right? A good curriculum is a good curriculum. And we need to make this available to, uh, I wish we could make it available to every novice driver. Um, they, we teach and driving the same way since the Model T. There needs to be a different way because the statistics tell us that this is the number one cause of injury um, and death to this age group. So we want to be able to take this and have a building block curriculum and be able to bring them along and grow them all the way through from the beginning simulation to on road. We give them a little bit of classroom. We make them understand the responsibility of driving. If we're going to affect um, their attitude and their belief about what constitutes being a good driver, then we have to have multiple points of being able to touch and speak with them and educate them and draw them along so that they're well prepared to be out there in really what's a very complex environment. Our roads are extremely complex and we have to give them the tools to be able to make the decisions and have the proper judgment. And they can't get that any other way but through experience. And experiential uh, learning starts right on our simulation and carries through in all of the different types of modalities that we use. Part of what I do as a lead instructor is also hire new instructors. Some of the things I look for when I'm searching out candidates is um, somebody who's empathetic, 
who's intuitive, who's driven towards change in themselves and in students, and somebody who can take initiative. It's interesting when people come in and applicants come in and they're interested in a position as an instructor, they often think that the only thing that they're going to need is a driver's license. Um, and we have to really make sure that we're clear that that's the least important piece. It's more about how they would be able to learn and adapt and use the driving to BA um, method of uh, driving. And then again, how they would be able to teach that with training. One of the ways we vet instructors or potential candidates is through a brief phone interview where I have a conversation with them. After that point, if they meet a lot of the criteria that I'm looking for, then I move them to an in-person interview where I bring them into the office. We meet um, with myself, other lead instructors, our director of curriculum, and the owner of the company. From there we decide if we want to move forward with them as a candidate. One of the things we do if after that in-person interview we want to move forward with that person is we invite them to come in for a shadow day and during that time they're able to kind of see how instructors work in each content area and determine if this is something that they're truly interested in doing and something they truly want to be a part of. We go through a series of interviews and um, if they make it through those interviews then we go ahead and have them do a shadow day because we want to make sure before we move any further forward that it feels like a good fit to them um, and they get the experience and they actually get to live the life of an instructor for a day. Um, we have a very mission-driven curriculum and we expect a lot of our, uh, instructors and so we want to make sure that they will be able to make the type of commitment that's necessary so that when the students come in they get to see the same instructors over and over again, they know what to expect and that they're here for all of our in-services and further training. Our instructors are trained um, through a lot of observation and kind of a co-teaching model. So they start out observing in all content areas, from the beginning simulation lab, on-road, classroom, and defensive driving labs. And then we really hammer in on the specific areas that they're going to be teaching in. Um, so then they start off with an observation model where they're observing a seasoned instructor. After that, it moves to a co-teaching model where they're kind of taking the front seat, but a seasoned instructor is with them to kind of lend a hand. After they're able to demonstrate their knowledge in that content area and a solid ability to instruct um, students, then they are able to become a solo instructor where the leads just kind of step in every once in a while to kind of assist as needed. Well, it's important that they understand all of the different roles um, that all the different instructors play within our program. Um, that starts with classroom, beginning simulation, on road, as well as uh, defensive driving simulation skills. They need to know all of that and then we kind of take a deeper dive in the different types of programs that they're going to be involved with directly. Part of our ongoing training is every year, twice a year, we shut down for several days to have an in-service for all of our instructors. We usually shut down while students are taking their final exams in school. Um, and then we cover any new content and we give our instructors new tools and strategies for working with all students. Uh, and then as far as ongoing training, we're constantly tweaking and making sure that we're upholding, um, again, our curriculum and that we're upholding our guise of we always want to make sure that this is based educationally and scientifically. We want to make sure that we're being encouraging, encouraging them to take on this type of responsibility and more importantly that they're enjoying it, that they're enjoying the responsibility as well. Evaluation is an ongoing process. We constantly are having informal meetings and touching base with our instructors. Um, we have them drive with one another, we have them drive with us. We as the leads take the front seat and we model what we expect them to be able to do and deliver to our students. This way we make sure that no matter what instructor the student's with, they're getting the same message, the same tone, and the same educational experience. All of our instructors go through an evaluation process where as lead instructors, I go on ride-alongs with them in the car, I come and observe them in the simulation labs, and we work with them 
on an individual basis to make sure that they have all the tools and strategies they need to be successful in instructing a variety of students. Um, we meet with a lot of the instructors almost daily, if not weekly, to ensure that any students that they may have had challenges with, they know how to work with more precisely in the future.